Okay, so if we're going to talk about uh, sustainability, we really need to talk about wind energy. And what I want to do now is talk to you about how Modsen is helping us accelerate the energy transition away from fossil fuels to renewable energy. The first thing we have to understand is really the size of these turbines. So these things are absolutely massive and they're continually growing in size. We're already seeing turbines with rotor diameters of over um, 250 meters and that's predicted to continuing um, to grow. So what's important to know here is that we can't take a wind turbine and put it into a wind tunnel to test a 100-year wind gust. This all has to be done by simulation. So simulation is in fact driving the design of these new wind turbines. Firstly, I'd like to show you uh, an example of how Modsim is being used for generative design. So this is the planet carrier. I want to show how we can get a significant mass reductions and cost savings using Modsim. So what does that look like? So if, first of all, in the complete turbine, I want to show you where that component is. So looking at the drivetrain and then zooming in to the second stage planet carrier. So here on the platform, the um, automatic meshing of that and then we can also add the ultimate loads. We can do a stress calculation. We can see where there's areas that are not bearing any of that weight, and we can remove those. Look, we define which space we want to um, optimize. Here, what we're doing, um, we are adding material to bring down the stresses to be within the defined safety factors of this component. So once we do that, we can do automatic reconstruction, we can do some surface smoothing, and then have the final um, optimized component. What have we achieved with this one example? Is we have reduced the weight of this component by 931 kilograms, and that correlates to a uh, material savings of 22%. And this isn't the only component we can do this. We can do this for most of the components on the entire wind turbine. What I want to focus now is on the rotor blades. And this is perhaps the most important and most complex structure of the wind turbine. So we already have blades over 120 meters in length. They are very complex bodies, a lot of curves and, um, and um, smooth flowing shapes. If we now look inside that blade, we see that's made up of many different materials. So we have um, fiberglass materials, we have foam core, we even have balsa wood that's helping to hold that aerodynamic shape along those profiles. Um, so there's a lot to be considered when you design that. How does that look on the platform um, with Modsim? First, we have the designer. He goes in, defines all those shapes, he then also defines all the different material types. If there's um, unidirectional fibers or if there's biaxial fibers, all those different layers, the foams, the various sections. Here you can see in this chart, um, all adding the various plies to the different areas and also the angle of the fibers. And importantly, particularly for the um, structural engineers, is the load-bearing beam um, that goes down the center of that rotor blade. And here we can see with the top and bottom spar caps and the side uh, shear webs. So once he's finished with that design, he can then hand that over to the simulation engineer. So this, all, again, all done on the platform. He simply passes on that design and says, you know, this is the one that we're moving forward with. He can then open that um, and start looking at the engineering properties of that blade. And he's, he's sure to have that the most up-to-date data since they're all working in the same platform. So here he's just meshing that blade um, and that can be all done um, automatically. And what's important here is defining all the different layers, making sure those material properties are correct, the width of those different um, layers and plies, also um, the orientation of the fibers within that, and um, also the spacing between those fibers. So once he's um, sure that that is all correct in his rotor blade, he can then you know 
automatically start carrying out you know, different engineering analyses. Here, looking at the deformation of that blade by adding very um, basic loading to that, and then also looking at the stresses within that blade. And this is important to see if there's possible cracks that will occur or delamination of the plies. And the big question is, if the, this has never been built before, where is he getting the loads from? That has to be predicted with simulation. And we do that using multi-body simulation. So here you see the turbine from the foundation, the flexible tower, flexible blades, the drivetrain, the generator, there's power electronics control, so a lot of multi-physics going on. And here we are applying a typical um, turbulent wind field. That's just two different representations of that. And seeing the loads that are imparted upon this blade. So we literally run thousands and thousands of load cases to accurately predict the loading on the blade over its 20 year lifespan. Um, so what we want to do is to bring that all together, the design, the simulation, the um, basically also the, um, the structural analysis, also the multi-physics model, um, all together into one loop so we can start doing design of experiments and um, optimization. So we're now doing a complete multidisciplinary design, analysis, and optimization of that blade. And what we were looking at is, um, in this example, is just varying the offset of those uh, shear webs and also the width of that spar caps. So what does that look like? Um, for firstly an overview of that workflow. Um, for the initial design, we start off with the outer surface. So this is um, defined by the optimization of the aerodynamics. Then within the platform, we carry out um, the design of that blade using CATIA composites. Then we can automatically extract the cross-sectional stiffnesses along that blade, so usually about 50 cross-sections, and we need this to generate a simplified beam model of that blade that we can use within our system's um, multi-body uh, model and carry out our load ca calculations. Then from that, we have our results and analytics, and based upon those results, we can go back and start tweaking our design and carrying out you know, what-if scenarios and um, an optimization. We can even add extra levels of complexity onto this workflow. For example, detailed structural analysis, looking at you know possible uh, delamination or uh, crack propagation. And who works with this is really anyone who's involved with that design. So this workflow can be used from everyone from the project manager all the way to the design and simulation engineers. So they're all now speaking the same language, using the same tool to investigate this blade and come up with the best design. So in practice here, we've set up um, using a process um, composer, design of experiments, optimization. Here, we're just looking through all the different variations. We can quickly take out um, variations that, that did not achieve our requirements, such as the the tip of the blade being too close to the tower, and all the remaining ones, we can look at them in further detail, looking at the spider charts, animations, loadings, etc. And then once we see which is the best option to move forward with this design, that can then be forwarded um, within the, the browser to the um, product manager. So what have we achieved or what can we achieve with mode sim in the wind energy sector. One is uh, most important perhaps is save the planet, you know, by accelerating um, the energy transition to re uh, renewable energies. And what we've already seen at customers who are using um, CATIA composites and our structural app for the design of rotor blades, we already saw a 90% reduction of design time over the method they were using um, before. Also, we've seen at customers a huge reduction in costs. One customer, by using higher fidelity models, which enabled him a higher level of optimization, he saw a cost reduction of 8% of CapEx costs of a single turbine. 
So these are just some of the benefits. I'm really just scratching the surface here that we've already seen using mode sim within the wind turbine um, sector. So with that, I'd like to pass the stage over to Diraj. Thank you.